Thank you, Patrick. Um, my name is Peter Bloom. I'm the president of Bloomy, and I'm presenting BMS Hardware in the Loop Testing Accelerates Electrified Vehicle Battery Pack Development. A few, very quickly, a few things about Bloomy. Uh, we develop battery and BMS test and simulation equipment for advanced batteries ranging from pacemakers all the way up to um, megawatt scale grid energy storage systems. We're a National Instruments Platinum Alliance partner. Um, as uh, Joe mentioned, I wrote a, a book called The Lab Style Stylebook, and uh, we have the most National Instruments uh, certified LabVIEW architects of any company in the world, and we're ISO 9001 certified. So I'm going to present uh, the factors pacing electrified vehicle battery development. I'm going to provide a brief introduction to hardware in the loop testing. Um, I'm going to present Bloomby's BMS hardware in the loop test platform that is used uh, by Jaguar Land Rover and I'm going to uh, provide an overview of how Jaguar Land Rover um, uses hardware and loop testing in um, electrified vehicle battery development. So, um, traditional factors pacing electrified vehicle battery development include the strong interdependency between the pack and the BMS electronics. Um, that um, in a lot of cases, with a lot of battery companies and vehicle companies, um, we're waiting for a prototype of the pack before we really get into uh, depth on the uh, BMS design and test uh, process. <coughs> The BMS is so dependent on the pack in terms of its chemistry, its uh, number of cells, series, and in parallel um, configuration, the um, type of temperature and voltage sensing, and uh, communications. But it's very time consuming, inefficient, and dangerous to develop and test the two together. Um, in particular, um, you're wasting a lot of time if you're waiting for a pack prototype uh, to be available. Once the pack prototype is available, um, how much testing can you really accomplish with that, uh, with your BMS? Really, to test all of the functions that the BMS is designed for, you would have to have thousands of packs exhibiting all kinds of different uh, behaviors and faults and everything else like that. Um, moreover, testing with a pack as the stimulus is not a repeatable test because we all know that packs degrade with every charge and discharge cycle. So in order to have repeatable BMS testing, uh, you, need, um, you need to simulate the pack using an electronic alternative. And finally, if you could uh, uh, test a pack with faults, that would be downright dangerous. Um, so, for obvious reasons. So, how many of you um, are familiar with hardware in the loop testing? Okay, a few of you. How many of you are doing hardware in the loop testing currently of a BMS? All right, just a couple. So this slide is worth going over briefly. Um, so hardware and loop testing is the test, a technique for development and testing of a complex real-time embedded system using a simulated version of the process or the plant that is modeled mathematically using a tool, usually something like uh, Simulink, uh, MapleSim, C++, or other types of tools and basically taking the electronic signals from your embedded system exactly as they're generated by the embedded system and um, converting those over into what your model is expecting 
to as variable values or parameters of the model. And then the model executes and it generates uh, outputs to simulate the next state of the plant or the process. And um, in an HIL simulator, those outputs are physical electronic signals that mimic the sensors and the digital communications that the embedded system is expecting. So to the embedded system, the HIL simulator is the process or the plant. A BMS is an embedded system. It um, is basically has a real-time uh, firmware, software running on a microcontroller, usually has some ASICs, maybe for cell balancing or for other types of functions, um, may have some field programmable gate arrays, and um, the process or plant that we're modeling can be the pack, as in the top illustration here, or it could be the entire vehicle and uh, associated systems, as shown in the bottom illustration here. So why perform BMS hardware in the loop testing? First of all, because it is safe. If you use commercially available electronic battery simulation hardware, then you won't have um, a dangerous condition during your testing. It's repeatable. As mentioned previously, uh, the electronic hardware is repeatable, whereas the pack uh, changes. It's comprehensive, um, whereas you can test all of the features that the BMS is designed uh, to monitor and control, and then some. You can actually uh, test um, conditions that the BMS was not designed uh, to monitor and control using your hardware in the loop simulator. So it's more comprehensive than what you can do with real packs. Um, you can use it to help satisfy quality standards and regulations. And it's the only way to test uh, the dynamic characteristics of the battery in real time. Very importantly, um, hardware in the loop testing facilitates concurrent development of cells, modules, pack, BMS hardware, BMS firmware, and vehicle systems. All of these um, the charging systems, etc., all of these can be uh, designed and tested in parallel. So Bluebee's BMS hardware and loop test system uh, consists of a uh, real-time hardware in the loop simulation of the entire pack. Uh, it can simulate um, all of the signals that the BMS will see, including up to uh, 200 or more series connected cells, um, current and temperature sensors, pack voltage, um, ECU and uh, EMS, or in the case of an energy storage system, the master controller communications. Um, and it runs one or many models in real time. The software consists of um, Veris, National Instruments Veristan real time test cell software and it can run multiple asynchronous, asynchronous cell models in real time. In terms of the Jaguar Land Rover program, um, we're running 24 asynchronous uh, cell models in real time. And uh, we're looking to scale that up to 108. Um, it runs automated test scripts for um, drive profiles, and variable load profiles, uh, fault insertion, precise identification of trip points, and the screen that you see here in the foreground is the manual control screen, allowing you to manually enter uh, voltage, temperature, state of charge, state of health, and balance current uh, for each cell. The fundamental building block of all of Bluebee's BMS test equipment is the battery simulator 1200. 
It is a commercial off-the-shelf instrument uh, that consists of 12 independently programmable cells with programmable um, levels, zero to five volts. It sinks and sources half an amp or up to half an amp of current under the BMS's control and provides current and voltage readbacks. It's isolated to a thousand volts channel to channel and channel to ground, which allows it um, to be connected, uh, many of these in series, in order to simulate a large pack. It has a LAN and uh, high-speed CAN bus interfaces, LabVIEW drivers, and uh, it's FCC and CE certified, and we provide it to companies in Europe, Asia, as well as North America. So um, the JLR, electrified vehicle program um, where the HIL testing goes on happens at the catapult um, facility at Warwick University in the UK and um, it consists at a high level of an open architecture BMS provided by R&D vehicle systems or RDVS cell models originally provided by catapult the BMS firmware is developed by JLR, and uh, of course, Bloomy provided the HIL test system. A couple features of the BMS is um, it's a main controller with uh, cell supervisory control circuits that monitor and control, and control uh, the various cells. Um, importantly for um, JLR is uh, it has a very open firmware architecture where JLR, I'm sorry, RDVS has provided a something called PC Tools, um, which um, is a environment for developing the application firmware that does the cell balancing, state of charge, state of health, charge and discharge control, and thermal management. And that's all developed by JLR. All of the intensive intellectual property aspects of the firmware is entirely owned and controlled by JLR. And what RDVS provides is um, low-level firmware and hooks and tools that allows uh, the JLR to uh, provide the application firmware. Additionally, um, you can download cell calibration levels. So here are uh, some of the JLR's BMS uh, test scenarios that have been enabled by the hardware in the loop test system. Um, first of all, they've successfully modeled and tested the, their pack with three different cell chemistries, and they've been able to verify the packs power and energy ranges under real-time driving conditions using each of these cell chemistries. They uh, have subsequently settled on one cell chemistry and uh, that's where all of their testing has been and it's the cell chemistry that they're going to use in an upcoming production vehicle. They um, perform drive cycle testing using a combination of both industry standard drive cycles as well as JLR has their own drive cycles of what they expect their uh, drivers, their customers, um, what their driving likelihood or skills or um, how they expect their cars to be driven by their client target clientele. They're able to uh, characterize the BMS, the pack, in the vehicle's response to fault case scenarios um, under these uh, real-time driving conditions. They're able to do simulated environmental testing of the pack at different temperatures. Um, a very cold temperature, a regular temperature, and a very hot temperature. They're able to um, reproduce track test data that they're receiving on the track on the BMS hardware and the loop test system. 
and reproduce the uh, pack behavior and look at it um, on the test stand. They um, test the voltage and temperature trip levels and response times by running a test script that automatically cycles through incremental cell voltages and temperatures and captures both the levels and the response times of the BMS to each alarm condition, uh, whether it be critical um, or non-critical. It, um, it's used extensively for BMS firmware regression testing. So any change that JLR makes to the firmware, they run through comprehensive tests on every feature, um, every um, type of test um, on the test stand before releasing that new BMS firmware version um, onto the vehicle. In conclusion, oops, BMS HIL testing accelerates electrified vehicle battery pack development by decoupling the pack from the BMS development and test. This ensures safety, increases quality, and reduces risk. It accelerates time to market. And um, all of JLR's firmware revisions uh, for their prototype vehicles are first tested on the BMS HIL test system before release. Um, any questions about this? Um, our contact information is on the slide. Also, Bloomy has a desktop version of their BMS HIL test system in booth 2114, uh, which we are exhibiting here at the show.